Cruz. Carrick wins it back. Great play again from Valencia. Evra with the shot, he scored! Patrice Evra gives Manchester United the precious away goal! Oh, it's game on now in Munich! Evra's last and only previous Champions League goal was seven years ago. Back come by him, though. arrived at the far post United were still celebrating their goal now they're back level again Ribery again in possession twisting and turning and getting to the byline here's Robin dangerous ball Muller Bayern Munich have scored again Manchester United's Champions League life hangs in the balance. Well, his little tactical switch. Very nearly picking out his teammate. Here's Robert. Superbly done by Arjen Robert. It could be curtains for Manchester United now. It was heartbreak for United fans as well as Barcelona fans in the UEFA Champions League. They are out of all of that. Well, and Namdi joins us to look at that. Thank you for coming on this morning. Uh, good to be here. Well, did they see this coming? Let's start with that of the uh, Manchester United. Uh, Evra getting that fantastic goal. And as we heard, seven years on, he hadn't scored. And so when he scored, unexpectedly, he was in cloud nine. Uh, but it was brought back to earth. He <laughs> was brought back to earth. But um, I, I think um, if any Manchester United fan is going to be honest with himself, they didn't expect to do this well to still be within a chance of qualifying, going to Germany for the second leg, getting an away goal there. Any United fan who is disappointed is not being realistic with himself because based on the form they've had this season, um, their run in Europe has probably, be, probably been their best run in any competition they've had this season. Um, David Moyes, however, showed his tactical naivety in this match. You get a precious away goal, and like you rightly said, it was Ebra who got the goal and went to sleep. As soon as you get the goal, you do something to break. You do something. You don't start celebrating. You keep the players back on earth. Don't let them. Don't let their heads go up. Make a substitution. Do what you need to do to kill the intensity of that moment and allow your team to relax again. And we saw against Chelsea when then Baba scored the second goal against PSG that put Chelsea in the driving seat. They went celebrating. And Mourinho ran to the celebrations to tell them to get up and get back on the pitch. And from what someone said, he told them there's still three minutes and there's still three minutes of injury time at least. Stop celebrating, get back, your job is not yet over. This is when they had scored a goal that will probably take them through. But we saw David Moyes ecstatic celebrating, he didn't believe it, he, he lost his head. Who then, can blame him? This man is going through a hectic period in, in the yes, Premier League. but it, it's that attitude that has put him there. We saw Guardiola, um, before this match, he lost his entire midfield. Schweinsteiger guys suspended, Martinez out. Um, Thiago injured. He had no central midfielder. Tony Cruz was the only cent recognized central midfielder. So they knew what they had to do. Stretch United, wing to wing. And that's what they did. Alaba and um, Lam, who are their left and right fullbacks, were playing almost as holding midfielders um, behind the five midfielders. And then you had Ribery and Robin going so wide. And they were throwing the ball wing to wing. If you look at all the goals, it came from them coming from the wing, spread United thin, and then coming because there's nobody in the middle. David Moyes couldn't answer to that. That was what they did in the first leg to get that first goal, where they had to just stretch that defence because at the time they closed in the space, so there was nowhere for Bayern to, no space for them to play with and get their the, goals. The thing in. was, in, in the first game, Bayern had midfielders. They were coming through the middle, down the wings, but they had no midfielders for the second game. Now, any coach who is tactically wise knows he needs to keep that ball in the middle, but David Moyes allowed them to dictate the game. And we saw what happened later. Even Lam was moved to the middle, and Rafinha, another fullback, was brought. David um, he, um, Guardiola had all almost wide men on the pitch. So that kept United spread very thin. It almost looked as if they outnumbered United everywhere on the pitch. But that's because United were playing to Bayern's pattern. In the first leg, they packed the bus, locked up shop. Second leg did the same thing, kept their shape disciplined. First goal came in, David Moyes didn't calm things down. They make the right changes immediately. 
and there was no need to start rolling. You know, Sikajola telling him, it's not over. Just get back online. Get back What online. a real coach should do. David Moyes was celebrating when he considered he's sitting down just looking. He doesn't seem to have that strength of character, at least not yet. Um, there was no need to start Rooney. Rooney had been injured, but he made a statement for the match and he'd be mad not to play Rooney. Uh, why? Um, we saw during the match, Rooney was off colour, off form, missed two sitters, and probably could be more culpable than Patrice ever in the loss to um, Bayern Munich. Because what he, about the potential Rooney threat? Could it be that his presence in the field alone, even a half fit Rooney, Send shivers down the spine to Bayern. Two, two games without Rooney, United have scored eight goals in the Premier League. Not in Champions League. <laughs> well, the, the truth is there has been a momentum um, they've been building up. Keep it. No matter in Champions League, agreed. Bring in Hernandez. Bring mm. in Rooney. Let Rooney stay on the bench. Let him stew on the bench. Let, so we know Rooney's Hernandez enemy. would have given them a run. Yes. While they are trying to stretch United thin, Hernandez is the kind of striker that stands with the final line of the defence. He doesn't let them get very close to the midfield because he will beat your offside trap and score. So the defence has to sit very deep. So now you have one player altering by and ship. Don't let them... The, what's Alaba and Lam were doing of playing very high up the field and leaving their two centre-backs exposed would have been very bad because that channel between the full-back and the central defenders would have been exploited properly by Hernandez, who has good off-the-ball movement. Unfortunately, um, United started Rooney, who is a bit of a... who likes to sit a bit deep and make his way forward and that just played perfectly into Bayern's hands. But now Moya says his uh, immediate uh, priority now will be to bring United back to the Champions League. Can he do it? Um, it's not that he can't do it. Um, the players are there. What I don't know is if he has been able to win this team over. The team don't seem to have any fights. They don't seem to be playing for him. Um, so it's, maybe he needs to do an overhaul or United need to change their manager, which would be the simple thing. But to anybody who is hoping David Moyes will get sacked, um, the bad news is United don't exactly have uh, that culture. But even if they win the remaining managers. matches in yeah. the Premier League, can they make Champions League? Uh, mathematically, yes. The, the problem is that everybody above them is not just going to sit back and lose games because everybody wants to be in Europe. And if you look at the teams there, Tottenham, Jekyll and Hyde, but they are picking at the right time. Everton, they've been consistent all season. And Arsenal, with the squad they have, we know that sooner or later they're going to get a couple of good results. So it's just a mathematical chance. It's not an actual um, physical chance. What about Barcelona? How did the mighty fall? Um, it's simple. Um, someone coined the term, and I think I agree, called Gang of Madrid. That's Atletico <laughs> Madrid. They, they, they play like a gang. If you look at it, it's not that Barca have had a terrible season. I mean, they are competing for the league, where Atletico is topping, though. Um, they are competing for the cup domestic. They are still on for a domestic double. But that Atletico Madrid side, they play like a gang. Diego Simeone has instilled his own style of play in them. If you watch them play, every man seems to believe that the next man is there. Um, if a man, they launch for balls because if they miss you, they know the next man is coming. If they go at the attacking... As a system of defence. They throw ball, If they are attacking, they throw balls into space. Believe me, the next man will make the run. They, they play more for each other than tactically. They seem to be running more on motivation than on tactics. And they break very quickly. They are very skillful, very fast. And yes, Diego Costa might have lit up the headlines this season. But when you watch them play, there is no star within the team. They seem to play as one unit. And to show their discipline, they got a goal against Barcelona and locked up despite all the attempts. Which they didn't do in the first leg. In, in the first leg, it was, look, they were, in the first leg, they, you have to be fair to them. They were not at home. They were at the no camp. For you to go there and leave with a one-all draw in a Champions League quarterfinal, you've done something. But almost right. all their matches has ended in a draw between uh, themselves and, and Barcelona. Barcelona. Because it's been very tight at the top of the league in Spain. So there have been a lot of draws. Uh, but really, you, you, um, if you look at this um, Atletico side, it's not one that you can break down easily. I mean, they are playing, what everybody's playing, five man midfield. But the three people behind the striker seem to rotate and they drop a striker in there the odd time. Imagine you're marking your striker, Diego Costa, and David Villa is sitting behind him, who is equally as dangerous. So it, they have a lot of players who are great, who are talented, but have become um, less of stars and more of team players. And that's what has worked for them. And it will be very hard to see anybody beating them very, very soon. This is their first um, semi final appearance. If they make it to the final, they will join an elite club. A little club of play, um, of teams that have made it to the final, where only Bayern Leverkusen is. You know, you don't see people who make their first semi-finals and finals, but I think they have the team. But what I'm really looking forward to in the draws today is to see who Chelsea will play. They pull the chestnuts out of the fire, Chelsea. Chelsea, um, like I mentioned earlier, you always know that Mourinho has um, something up his sleeve. I mean, what he had this time was not tactics, was not skill. 
it was it was sheer um, <laughs> brilliant ruthlessness. Through every attacker everything into at the them. Match. He had every attacker he had on the pitch at one time. He had Shola, then Baba, Torres. It, it was and everything because because of the movement, said. it was so hard for PSG to pick them up. But Cavani. We'll look back but, at this match, at those but, chances he missed. But when Hazard was out and, and Sherlock came in, people thought, oh dear, game plan. There goes the game plan, off the roof. But Sherlock comes in. And if, you've been, if you've been watching this season, and Mourinho has praised him highly, um, Shola is he's your wing forward, meaning he could drop in from, he, can, he plays very wide, but drops in with such speed that it's very hard for defenders to pick him up. So he might and not have the strength very good. or the skill of Hazard, but he's a better finisher. Shola is a player you trust, trust more in the box than Hazard. Hazard can give you a long range strike, can take defenders, but Shola is more confident in the box. You know, before he came to Chelsea for a long time, he had even had to stand in as a centre forward. So he he has that. What I don't know is if um, this Chelsea side can get beyond a team like Atletico Madrid. I, I'll tell you this for free. If Chelsea met my, um, Real Madrid, I'd be a bit confident that Chelsea could get a result. Okay, now let's, let's look at this. This was that goal where uh, this, some have argued it wasn't tactics, it was just this was, sheer uh, determination. And luck. I mean, there was half a foul, dragging, almost falling, and he still had to um, get that ball in the net. But I mean, if you, you don't win a lottery if you don't buy a ticket. If you watch that, Chelsea just kept hitting it back into the box. Keep doing that and something will eventually happen. That's what Chelsea did. And this is what I'm talking about, Mourinho telling them, get up, well done, get back. It's not over. He was not even interested in celebrating. It's get back to the pitch. It's not over. Oh. David Moyes, we saw him celebrate. Mourinho, no celebrations here. Oh, but, dear. But Chelsea hold all the drama. If they meet Real Madrid, Mourinho <laughs> faces an old club. Wow. If uh, they meet Atletico, Atletico will have to do without one of their, one of their best players, their goalkeeper, because he's on loan from Chelsea. He'll have to sit it out. <laughs> so it, it's... it's and if they meet Bayern Munich, be. it's Pep Guardiola again. And he doesn't like meeting Mourinho. Okay, so there you go. Now, this is the semi-final list. Uh, yeah. Real Madrid, Chelsea, Atletico Madrid, and Bayern. Can you stick out your head for the final two? If I said... Well, I don't know how they would draw, but if Atletico Madrid and Bayern Munich don't meet in the semi-finals, I think they'll both be in the final. Mm, Atletico or Bayern. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, then. So there you go. That's it. Uh, looking at sports today on Sunrise Day. We'll be back after this. Thank you, Nambi, for coming on. So join us again.